What's up, guys? Thanks again for tuning in to Fantasy Football Tankers Edition here. Today we're going to do another mock draft. We did a 12-team PPR previously. We're going to hit you on a 10-team PPR this time. I'll be drafting number one overall. I'll be taking the 10 spot. We're going to take the turns to see how the value is, you know, to see how the value falls, to see if you got to overpay or not at these separate turn positions. And I know we're doing a 10-team league, and most of the leagues out there where you pay big money for, they're going to be 12-teamers. But a lot of the work leagues and, like, the hometown leagues, a lot of those leagues are 10-teamers. So for those people, this video is going to help you out a little bit. Yeah, we're also at the end of the video, we're going to try and hook you up with a screenshot of the draft board so you get a better idea on guys that we didn't mention or announce every single pick that went off. So... Just so you can evaluate our teams against like all the other teams. I mean, we're going to break down our teams, and we're going to look at a team we like from the other teams and then a team we don't like from the other teams after it's all done here. All right, starts in about 20 seconds here. Like I said, I got number one overall. Antonio Brown, I think, is really your only option. You got to go. I mean, that's the only play. I mean, and the thing is about the one hole and a 10-teamer, I mean, you're looking to get Antonio Brown, then have two supreme deal sexy boys fall back to you in the second and third round. I'm going to I'm gonna hope and pray that a guy like Mike Evans, Brandon Cooks, Cooper, some of those guys, I'll have some options. So I'm up. Antonio Brown. Got to do it. Oh, I think my end of the first year, my turn, it's going to be, I'm going to have some pretty good guys. What's well, really going to freak me out, I mean, I'm just hoping I got some sexy boys still at the 3-4 turn when it gets back to me, because I know I'm going to get some sexy boys here at the 1-2 uh, turn. That's guaranteed. Top three are off, the usual. Antonio Brown, Julio Jones, Odell Beckham Jr. No surprise really there. I mean, at four, I'm taking AJ, but, you know, a lot of people like these running backs, so you never know what's going on. But I definitely, if, if I was drafting at four right now, I'd definitely take A.J. Green. I think he's the most steady. He's the most there, ready. Just went off at four. Oh, good. Me. That's my man. Good boy. Good man. <laughs> Doing. Maybe he watches the podcast out there. <laughs> oh, I got David Johnson at five. Now, I like that. He's my number one PPR back. And I probably would have taken about another two or three more receivers before I would have taken David Johnson. But I'm no way hating on David Johnson at five overall. Hopkins at six again, a target machine. Over two hundred targets last year. I mean, I would, I think Hopkins is my fifth overall rated player. But I mean, like I said, I mean, I am not hating on the David Johnson pick. He's my number one PPR rate, ranked running back. And I think if anybody's going to go out there and have more fantasy points than the dudes, the receivers outside the top three, I think it'd be David Johnson. All right, what are kind of some some guys that you're targeting around the turn? Around the turn you're here? Hope, you're hoping guys that are going to slide to you at the 10 and 11 spot. I mean, right now, with this Le'Veon Bell thing, like with three games, I think I really like Le'Veon Bell here at the turn and then try to sew up uh, D'Angelo Williams for me at like a later, like a 7 or, or like the 7 or 8 turn or maybe even hope that I can get him at the 8 or 9. If I can get him at the 9 or 10 turn, I am all in on that for sure. All right, we're looking at him here. Still on the board. Still on the board. Very wide receiver heavy, this one. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of receivers going off, but seven are off the board here. So I'm just going to line it up here. I think if anybody could be the number one running back outside of the three games that he doesn't play over Gurley and David Johnson, I think uh, Le'Veon Bell is definitely your guy. <laughs> but... Uh, I don't know. Messed up. It gave me Ezekiel. Elliott. We're just gonna say I took. Uh, we're just gonna say I took uh, Le'Veon Bell because I'm not taking Ezekiel Elliott there. And I'm gonna take the Garen. I'm gonna go running back, running back here. I feel good about it. I mean, I think I'll, there'll be some wide receivers in a ten-team league that'll come yeah. back to me at the three-four turn. And I think if I can sew up like a, a, a real, I mean, a real guaranteed uh, guy here, I think Adrian Peterson and Le'Veon Bell here at the end of the first. I mean, that's good. Yeah, we'll just forget Ezekiel Elliott's on. Yeah, hey, quarterback. So. I mean, we had a computer malfunction out there. <laughs> no quarterbacks were involved. Yeah, I think... My eight... chubby finger hit the wrong player, people. I'm sorry. 
I think Adrian Peterson, he's good value at that turn. He's you know he's gonna produce, and I feel like if if you're in a redraft league, he's about as high floor as a guy you can pick. I mean, if anybody's gonna get the most touches in the NFL, it's gonna. I mean, I think it's gonna be Adrian Peterson. I mean, as far as catches and rushes combined, I think, I mean, Adrian Peterson is getting near 300 rushes. I mean, that's happening. I mean, I know he's not that big of a catch guy, but I think 350 touches, I think that's, like, almost a guarantee for the man. And, again, Le'Veon Bell, I feel a lot better paying that price now that it's only three games, and I feel like D'Angelo's stock slips a little bit. And even if you, for some reason, a guy's loving on him and gets him in – you know, fifth, sixth round ahead of you, you can still sew up a pretty decent RB2 that you can throw out there for a few weeks. Especially in a 10-team league. I mean, you, I mean, your RB3 I'm going to get here is probably is going to be decent enough for the first three weeks for me to run him out there. I mean, he's probably, he might not produce what D'Angelo Williams will, but, I mean, he's not going to be a flopper. All right, and again, too, if you got the turn, I mean, you can milk that clock. Oh, yeah. If you don't know, if you only know one guy that you definitely want, and you don't know that second guy, you just let that minute and a half run down. And so you get that full three minutes to decide who your second guy is going to be. Like, if you got, if somebody, like, s snaked one of your two guys that you were in love with, take that full three minutes to decide on who you get so you don't, so you don't have to go on tilt there. All right, I'm a couple picks away here. The best available for me right now, Jamal Charles, Freeman, Alshon, Cooks, McCoy. All right, I'm up. I'm going to go Jamal Charles here, and I think I'm going to wait a little bit before, before I submit because, again, I'm kind of looking at these guys. All right, I'm drafting Jamal Charles. I think if he's healthy, he's easily top 10 PPR back. Can be top 3, top 5 upside. And now I want to get another receiver before they get too crazy away from me. I'm looking between Alshon and Cooks. I think I'm going to go Cooks because Alshon scares me a little bit with the soft tissue problems. And I feel like with Drew Brees, whenever you're the number one threat with Drew Brees, you're in for a monster season. And like we said in the last podcast, what did we say that was a push? As push can be? It was Cooks and Alshon or is that Cooks and Cook, Cooper? Cooks and Cooper. Cooks and Cooper. But Alshon's in that conversation yeah. along with these three guys. I mean, I'm saying there's three receivers that you know about that are going to be the sexy boys, Antonio Brown, Julio, and uh, OBJ. And then there's four more guys in Hopkins, Allen Robinson, A.J. Green, and Des, Des Bryant. Uh, and then there's like seven or eight guys that I feel like almost the same about. Yeah. And it comes down to who who do you personally love more? I mean, I love I'm really high on Mike Evans this year, and even Keenan Allen. I mean, my tier three, my third tier for wide receivers is huge. It's like eight or nine guys. There's three dudes in the first one, four dudes in the second one, and there's like eight or nine dudes in the third. And if you get any of them, I'm happy with. I think Keenan Allen. A few weeks ago, he was kind of going. I saw him in 12 teams, late first, early second. He's kind of fell back into that mid-second, even late second. The guy before he went down was a PPR animal. I think he was only, like, second to, like, Antonio Brown or something like that at that point before he went down in receptions. I mean, he was, it was just crazy. And we got guys going off the board. We got some more wide receivers. We got T.Y. Hilton, Alshon, Jeffrey gone. And then we got Freeman and McCoy gone, along with now Doug Martin. And I am not believing in Doug Martin. I'm glad Doug Martin's going because there's three wide receivers I'm still staring at. And I got three picks that go before me. And I'm hoping I get two of these three guys. I'm looking at Jarvis Landry. I'm looking at Demarius Thomas. And I'm looking at Sammy Watkins here. Yeah, and if I, I can get two of those three guys at the 3-4 turn with the two running backs that I just scored in the first and second round. You got to love it. I'm in love with it. Those are all guys that are going to be target animals. All right, Lacey's off, so that helps you out That's there. That's all. I'm more. getting at least one of them then. But if I can get two of those three guys, oh, Landry went. Landry just went. So we'll see here. 
But if I can't get those guys, I mean, I'm thinking I'm, I, I might screw up. I'm looking at either a Cobb or a Macklin. And I think I'm leaning toward Macklin almost here. You like Macklin over Cobb and Edelman? I'm a little bit scared of the Edelman of Edelman this year. Yep, Sammy, Sammy Watkins up. went. So I'm going to look at it. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to get Demarius Thomas loaded up so I can just push the button and get him over so we don't have another Ezekiel Elliott debacle. <laughs> But I'm looking at Demarius Thomas, and I'm going to get another quick peek at uh, running backs here. But if there's dudes I don't really like. Right now, your best backs are Mark Ingram. Latavius Murray, and I'd say C.J. Anderson. Anderson. All right, clock's ticking down. on. De so I'm going to go ahead and load up Demarius Thomas right now. And think about it, because I haven't decided. I might take Jordan Reed here. I mean, I think if the dude's available, I think Jordan Reed has the most upside fantasy points. In Jordan Reed, he's almost like... A low end tight end one out there for you in the lineup. I mean, or low end wide receiver or one. Like a low, low end yeah. wide receiver one. I mean, this guy, there's no reason why Jordan Reed couldn't be the number one tight end. And I know I'm taking him a little bit earlier than his average draft position, but I'm looking at Jordan Reed or Randall Cobb or Jordan Reed or Mark Ingram. I I'm going Jordan Reed. Sew it up. I mean, that's, I mean, I'm putting a guy at a tight end position that's going to be manhandling other dude's tight end position besides Rob Gronkowski, basically. Just <laughs> manhandling. It, it, Man had 96 balls last year. 90, yeah, 96, 97, and over 1,000 yards, 12 Ball touchdowns. touchdowns. Incredible. And Kirk Cousins And missing loves two him. games. Missed two games. The He's definitely how that, I mean, he, Redskins he, offense oh, runs through Jordan Reed. They do. He's the, he's the everything on that team, really. I mean... He's the possession receiver. He's the goal line threat. He's everything. I mean, as long as those concussions stay away, there's no reason why Jordan Reed could not be the number one fantasy tight end this year. And I love the man beast. I love Rob Gronkowski. I do. But, like, a round, like two rounds later... I, I think the value on Jordan Reed is much higher than Rob Gronkowski. A full two rounds later... All right, so right now I got two receivers in Brown and Cooks, and I got Jamal Charles. Right now I'm hoping... All right, well, Jeremy Macklin's off here. Right now at my best available, I'm looking Benjamin, Latavius, Murray, Golden Tate, guys like that. You know, I think Golden Tate for your wide receiver three, there's some upside there with Calvin Johnson gone. I don't love the pick, but he's an option at that point. And I really don't like quarterbacks, but, you know, I think I'm going to go Andrew Luck here because if you're saying midway through the season that you would not trade a Latavius Murray for an Andrew Luck, you're probably insane. I think he can win you some leagues here. And I am going to get Golden Tate for my third receiver here. He's the number one threat in Detroit now with Johnson gone. He's going to see some targets. He's got a little magic in him. And I think for a third receiver, that's pretty oh, solid. Oh, yeah. I think he's looking at least minimum. What do you tell you? 120, 130 targets minimum? I, th I expect... Minimum 70 to 80 balls, 1,000 yards. I think he can creep up in the I seven. think you can write him down for 90 balls. I think seven to eight touchdowns at least. I think you can write him down for 90 balls and like 1,100 yards right now. I really do. And, I and, mean, I, and another guy I love, though, I do love Marvin Jones. Oh, I love Marvin Jones. I think those two will be... That's the only reason why I'm a little bit hesitant on the Golden Tate situation, but I I, mean, I think Golden Tate's getting his catches no matter what. Yeah. It's the touchdowns that I'm worried about Marvin Jones taking away. Marvin Jones is going about two rounds later here. I think he's been somewhere, what, in the seventh range? Marvin Jones, yeah, I've been seeing him going mid-seventh. I mean, and that's in twelve team. I yeah, guess, that's too. in twelve team leagues. I don't really do a lot of ten team mocks because a lot of my leagues are twelve teamers. But I mean, if he's going, he's going in the seventh. He's got to be at least going mid to late eighth in the uh, in, in the, a ten, in the team. ten team PPR. All 
Alright. Alright, it's getting close to me, and the running backs are dying, and I, so I feel really good about my first two picks being running backs at this point at the end of the first. Because I, I think there's still there's still a lot of receiver talent out there. I think you got to be looking receiver, receiver, unless you're really loving a quarterback in the situation. But I think you already got two very, very solid backs. I mean, I hate the running back, running back strategy, but in a 10-team league, I mean, this isn't so bad. I mean, in a ten-team league, there's so much more depth at receiver that you can't be as scared yeah, to push I'm, it. I mean, these fifth, sixth-round receivers and twelve-teamers turn into, you know, seventh, eighth-round guy or like sixth and seventh-round yeah. guys. All right, you're up. All right, there. I'm up here. I'm looking. I'm definitely looking at receivers. You know, I'm. You know, I'm thinking about going steady and ready to guarantee myself some fantasy points since you know. I got that wide receiver, too. I need him to be more steady than a boom or bust kind of guy. And I mean, Eric Decker. Eric Decker is not sexy, but the guy can get in the... His, he can get 10 touchdowns. His low easy. watermark was 11.7 last year. I mean, that's insane. That's like the highest low watermark in the National Football League. He, he's a red zone threat. He's going to get you catches. Even with Marshall there, he's still putting up huge numbers. I think I'm... I mean, you're looking at receivers here, Doug Baldwin, Larry Fitzgerald, Jordan Matthews, Hearns. That's kind of your best available receivers. And I'm not really in love with any of those guys. Are you thinking quarterback? I am leaning towards quarterback. I mean, our last podcast got me all hyped up. <laughs> I think about taking the necromancer Drew Brees right here. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at either Drew Brees or Russell, Wilson. or Russell Wilson. I mean, that's another option. But I think Drew Brees' floor is higher than Russell Wilson's. And I think their ceilings are right about the same. Yeah. I mean, like we said in the last podcast, Drew Brees hasn't thrown less than 30 touchdowns, 32 touchdowns in almost a decade. Same with 4,400 yards. I think the only guy I really would have considered there over quarterback would have been Doug Baldwin. But I, I mean, I like Tyler Lockett more than I like Doug Baldwin. So I, if I can somehow get Tyler Lockett to come back to me, I mean, that's a gold mine. I'd be in love with that. And I think if I wasn't in the league with you, that might happen here. Yeah. But, <laughs> I also love so Lockett. That's a problem. Dra I'm talking about who I want right next to the guy who's drafting. I mean, that's not a good strategy during draft. What do you love people. so many the same guys that is? But. I got I Lockett's going a solid two rounds later than Baldwin, and I think they're gonna have very similar production by the time the season's done with. Oh yeah, I mean I think Baldwin, I think Baldwin probably gets them on touchdowns, but I think receptions and yards might be Tyler Lockett's. I mean Baldwin only had 103 targets last year. I mean that's, that's not, not glorious, and that's not your prototypical best receiver on the team. No, of targets. it is not. I mean, I don't think, I mean, the touchdowns were fluky. I mean, I know, I think, double, I think Doug Baldwin would probably get you at least eight or nine this year. Just because I mean, Russell Wilson's game, I think, has just reached a whole nother level. So everybody on it the is. team is going to be, yeah. going to get a, you know, going to higher value because of it. Yeah, it, it has turned into Russell Wilson's team. It is high flying. Like, they I don't even not, just, They're not the smash mouth team they were. Like, I am so afraid of guys like Thomas Rawls. Like, to draft Thomas Rawls in, like, the fourth or third round, I mean, that's crazy. You can get guys that will guarantee you points like that. Like, that's gambling way too early in drafts for my taste. All right, I'm I am mean, up he's no guarantee at nothing. Even Christine Michael has been coming up on that action. And I know Christine Michael again, but I'm this time looks for a reason. I'm up here, and I actually really, really like the position I'm in. There were five running backs that went – in the sixth round here, and I've got the tail end of the sixth, and I'm going to take this guy who I think will outproduce every single one of them. I'm going to take Jeremy Hill in the sixth round. I mean, I think the only guy that even messes with him. I mean, the six guy, I mean, of the five guys you're talking about, we're talking about Matt Forte. I, I think, think that's he the can. only man. He's the only guy. I mean, he's no guarantee, but the other four are nowhere even close to I think Jeremy Hill's on I know Gio Bernard's on that list but I mean same team I take Jeremy Hill over him all day yeah they're they already said that they do not expect Gio's touches to go up at all I mean and the other three are Duke Johnson Danny Woodhead and Arian Foster 
That's unsavory. Like, I'm taking Jeremy Hill all day over those three jump mooks. All right, I'm going to get my tight end here. Delaney Walker is on the board, but I'm taking Colby Fleener. I think his ceiling is higher than Walker's at this point. I think how we talked about Drew Brees can dig these guys up. The Ben Watson, who hasn't probably seen 70 touches since his Seventy catches since his New England. I'd days. say Walker has a higher floor than Fleener, but I mean, I guess I mean, I mean Walker did it last year. I mean, he, he is no spring. He is no spring chicken, though. He is no spring chicken. But I am all in on Colby Fleener this year. I love it. I mean, drafting him over Delaney Walker. I mean, that's saying you. I mean, that is loving him. <laughs> that is full in man love. Whoa! <laughs> to quote an old country song, "Love is a man." And he's Kobe Fleener, <laughs> apparently, for this guy over here. But I think I had to sew up a good tight end there. I think after after Delaney Walker and Fleener, it gets a little greasy in the tight end spots. You're seeing kind of guys like Kelsey and Barnage and Eifert, who's obviously missing time. Julius Thomas, obviously I'm a Jags fan, but I don't trust really Julius on a week-to-week basis. I think... He's, again, kind of touchdown dependent. Wouldn't expect more than 50, 60 catches. And I think I just love Kobe Fleener with Drew Brees throwing on the ball. And I know it's a little sketchy that I got Brandon Cooks there too. I've got Cooks and Fleener in my starting lineup. But like we said, Drew Brees hasn't thrown less than 4,400 yards and 32 touchdowns in almost a decade. So he's going to get the production from someone. Oh, so, I mean, I know he loves to spread around the ball, but that's a lot of cheese. Like, somebody's eating. <laughs> somebody's eating out there. All right, about to come back to you. Who are some guys you're, you're eyeing here? I got one more spot to go, but I'm thinking if I get both these guys, I'm going straight upside on wide receiver since I only have Demarius Thomas and Eric Decker right now. I mean, those guys aren't really sexy boys. But I got, I got sexy boys at all the other positions. I got Drew Brees. I got Jordan Reed. And I'm talking Adrian Peterson and Le'Veon Bell in my running back spots. I mean, I'm thinking I'm sewing up. They both are here. So I'm thinking I'm taking Tyler Lockett, and I think I'm taking Devontae Parker. Both of them. And, and Marvin, I mean, those Marvin, guys could turn into... Marvin, um, Marvin Jones is on the board. But I but think the I upside think of these dudes is way higher. Yeah, I think Marvin Jones is going to be a very, very solid guy. But I think both of these, you look up at the end of the year, can be second-tier wide receivers. I mean, with the talent I got at all these other positions, if these dudes you can, can be, they're worth flyers. If these dudes can be sexies in my flex, I mean, I should just be rolling people. And once Le'Veon Bell gets going, I mean, I mean, if, right now, I'm hoping next turn, uh, Daniel Williams already gone. Didn't notice that, but at this point, so be it. Yeah, if I mean, you can't. You can't pick D'Angelo Williams over Drew Brees. You can't pick D'Angelo Williams. Uh, yeah, I would have had to take in D'Angelo Williams over Drew Brees. I mean, D'Angelo Williams went over Tyler Lockett. I mean, that's crazy. This is He's only going to get you three games. He's only going to get you. He might be great for those three games, but it's it's not even a quarter of the season. It's not even a quarter of the season anymore. I and mean, what's this guy on? Like, he's looking to have this guy. He's like... He's too busy worrying about what my team's about and keeping me from getting him than worrying about how good his team's going to be in my eyes. I mean, that's a strategy you want to avoid, people. Don't get carried away with boning other people over because in that process, you'll be boning yourself. <laughs> All right, I'm hoping a Marvin Jones can last this far to me here. I've only got, I've got three receivers, but... I mean, if we're if we're in a two flex league, I'm probably going to be starting another receiver. I, I'm not big on putting three running backs out there in a two flex, and I'm looking for some pretty high ceiling guys at this point because I feel like Brown, Cooks, and Tate all have pretty solid floors. Yeah, I mean, and there's there's a lot of guys going off here. 
I mean, we got Roethlisberger going off already, and I'm not on that. I mean, there was, I mean, he had six games with one touchdown or less. I mean, I think you can if you're gonna do a Roethlisberger, I think you can wait until the 11th or 12th round to draft your quarterback and get somebody just as good. And you can apparently, get Eli Manning or Philip Rivers in the 10th or 11th. Roethlisberger's Ooh. almost getting Matt Ryan a bit. Like the guy he's throwing it to is looking to outscore him in fantasy football on a weekly basis almost now anymore. Especially uh, with Le'Veon Bell not around for the first three weeks. I think that, I mean, any all he has in Tony Brown. Apparently Sammy Coach isn't going to be anything since he's getting taken over by this Jamook Eli Rogers from the streets. All right, I'm looking here. If looking I, at if, him. If I did not have Golden Tate, I'm probably going to pull the trigger on a Marvin Jones. But my first pick at the turn, I'm going to go Sterling Shepard for the Giants. I think he's a guy who could have a thousand yards as a rookie, up at opposite side of Odell Beckham. And again, I'm gonna go high upside. I'm gonna get a running back be- before it gets too dirty out there, and I'm gonna pull the trigger on Melvin Gordon. We're gonna take Melvin Gordon for that pure upside. I'm going Melvin Gordon in the ninth round, pure upside. He, I guarantee. He will not be as bad as last year. I would bet my house that he has over zero touchdowns. <laughs> he has to. He absolutely has to. And I think he's a guy in the ninth round. If he does anything, he's going to return fourth, fifth round value easy. Easy. And for him to be on my bench, I feel good about it. I don't have. I can wait, kind of see how he goes. And I mean, if he's anywhere close to what people thought he was going to be last year, I mean. Pfft. Fourth, fifth round, even getting started talking about third round. I mean, some of these running backs going in the third are not very good. I would. Besides McCoy in the third, I don't like any running back in the third. What do you think? What are you projecting him at this season? We're, we're talking about Melvin, Melvin Gordon? Gordon here. I mean, his floor is so low. That's why that's the problem. But I don't think it can be any lower than what it was last I year. No. I think that's rock bottom. I mean, I think. If this dude can get you over, like, a 1,000 total yards, I think that's a win. But I think his ceiling is a little bit higher than that. I mean, I think if the – I mean, this offense is pretty good. And if he can get it going and they start using him more in the red zone instead of Danny Woodhead, I – that – that he could blow the roof off this this ninth-round draft pick he just made. I agree. I think – Mel and – if he was my RB2, obviously I wouldn't have took him there. I would probably get, like, a – like a Rashad Jennings kind of guy, someone that I know can produce right away. But Melvin Gordon on my bench, and I can wait and see what he's got. I think he's got as much upside as anyone that was still on the board at this point. All right, you got your four receivers. You got your pretty much whole starting lineup here. So we're going to be talking some bench guys for you. I'm looking, I need a guy that's going to play for me instead of Le'Veon Bell. And with this whole new Deion Lewis situation, I think that guy might be James White. I think getting James White here at the end of the ninth, I mean, that could save me in the running back two position instead of Le'Ve- and with Le'Veon Bell gone. Who knows, James White might even outplay D'Angelo Williams for those first three weeks. James White might turn into a bona fide flex play for me down the stretch. I think that's a value play. Is Deion Lewis going to be out looking at least probably six to eight weeks? They were talking Deion Lewis will play this year. That scares the, <laughs> that scares the hell out of me. What do you mean he will play this year? Was there was a, a chance question? he wasn't? <laughs> like, I'm not on that at all. And I'm looking maybe uh, probably pure upside here. Probably should get more wide receivers. And I, like I you said. get a Kevin White here, John Brown. You know, like I, like I said, you know, those three wide receivers in the for the Cardinals, I think I'd like to get at least one of them, and i like to get the last one. And John Brown here in the 10th round, the That's guy that had 1,000 yards last year, what do you have, seven or eight touchdowns? Downtown. Downtown. Brown. I'm going downtown. I'm going downtown here in the beginning of the 10th, and I feel good about it. I'll tell you what. I mean, a bench, bench your, John Brown? Your last three receivers... Lockett, Parker, and John Brown. I mean, my first two are like kind of like target guys, kind of like touchdown. Well, Thomas is a target guy. Eric Decker is a touchdown guy. But you know their floors as high as anyone. Oh, their floors are, like I said, Eric Decker's low watermark last year was 11.7. That's the best low watermark I have ever seen. (laughs) 
<laughs> and these guys, if anyone, if any of these guys hits and they are chucking out in their flex, that's and, a scary line. And I'm solidified at quarterback and tight end with Drew Brees and Jordan Reed. I'm coming at you. You're not getting over at me at quarterback and tight end on any given week, per and, se. And running backs, when Bell comes back, you're going to be chucking out Bell and Adrian Peterson out there. Yeah. James White, I, I mean, you only have you only have to play him for three weeks. I only have to play James White for Deion three Lewis weeks. Deion Lewis out. Garoppolo's going to be – he's not going to feel comfortable throwing it down the field. You'll probably see a lot of dump-offs from him. I mean, if Rashad Jennings would have slid a few more picks down to me like I was hoping in the ninth round like that, I would have taken Rashad Jennings and James White at that point. But, I mean, Rashad Jennings was gone, so I had doubled down on James White, and then I went pure upside with the John Brown in that Cardinals offense. All right. I think I'm going to go another high upside running back here. This guy is not going to be starting right away, but he, man, he has looked good in preseason, and that is Derrick Henry. He's looked really solid. Really preseason. He looks like the total package. I so, mean, I didn't like his college tape, but, man, did he look good out there for the Tennessee Titans the other night. So I'm taking him as my fourth running back right now. I mean, DeMarco Murray's big run was just a straight-line shot to the end zone. Derrick Henry was out there doing moves, making making people miss. I mean, he looked way – I mean, I wasn't even on him until I watched that tape, and he definitely at least made my board. Right now, I feel like I'm a little – Thin at receiver. I've only got four guys, but I'm really not loving any of these guys at all. Uh, well, I just kind of run dry over here on the receiver front. I'm glad I got up on five of them already. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Travis Benjamin here from San Diego. I mean, he kind of did early part of the season last year. He was like a top fifteen receiver for the Browns. I mean, if he can, I mean, if he's he, going to be the deep threat in that off in that offense. Keenan Allen's going to take some coverage away. I think Benjamin can at least be a respectful guy that on bye week that you can throw in there. Maybe some even upside. I mean, him. if this was like a best ball league, Travis Benjamin is a great player to own. I mean, this guy, in any given week, I mean, this guy can go out there and get you four catches for 120 damn yards and a touchdown. I mean, I'm not saying that's weekly. I mean, if he can do what he did for the Cleveland Browns, would he have over 900, oh, yeah. 900 yards for the Cleveland Browns? I mean, now he's got Uncle Phil throwing it to him. <laughs> and Phil, he throws some of, the, one, some of the best deep balls in the league. If Travis Benjamin is on the field for like 80 to 90% of these snaps because he's going to be lining up at the wide receiver too, yeah, isn't he? Yeah. He's looking right now. He's he is I don't see heavy how that's... favorite for wide receiver 2. In the 11th round, I actually think there's a good floor there. Oh yeah, that's with it, with a decent He's at least minimum. He's at least a, a solid bye week guy, minimum. I love it. All right. Come back to you. I think, you know, with this whole who, you know, this whole Sammy Coates, uh, Eli Rogers thing going on, I think Marcus Wheaton's stock is elevated enough for me to consider him here. I mean, this is the last pick of the 11th round. I mean, if he gets the second amount of targets on the Pittsburgh Steelers, who just are, just love to throw the ball. I mean, you're looking at, he, this guy could, this this guy might even get like 70 balls. He had some good games last year. I mean, I don't even like him. I think you got to hit another back. Here. I think I do have to hit another back. I'm looking at, what do you think, a Tevin Coleman maybe? I like the upside there. But Yeldon did look good in that preseason yeah, yeah. game the he other day. got a day. touchdown in there. And they're saying, I mean, his snap percentage has gone up. But they're talking, they're you know, saying 50-50. It was Ivory 60-40 a few weeks ago. And now they're saying 50-50 split. I mean, if Yellen goes out there and outperforms this guy, I don't think he can necessarily take goal line or short yardage work from him. But if he starts sneaking in some of that first and second down work on, Get like... Get some catches in. Oh, he's definitely going to be getting more catches than Ivory. But if he starts getting in there, like, gets his own drives going... I mean, if he, like, him and Melvin Gordon are, like, the same guy. Like, if they can turn it around, like, the ceiling could just blow yeah. up. You know, the glass ceiling on these guys could just shatter. I mean, this guy was a second-round pick as well. Yeah. It's an NFL pick, not fantasy. But I think 
Right there, I feel like you had to take running back. You, you and know, Ivory you, hasn't been, you know, Mister Healthy throughout his career. I mean, no, maybe the opportunity might come through injury. Even. I think that's what's going to happen. I think if Yeldon becomes the man of that offense, it's because Ivory is battling injuries. But even Yeldon in the twelfth, that's solid value. Oh. He, can, he can be mid to low tier RB2 out there when you, and you don't even in, have to play him right away. Oh yeah, when you draft him in the 12, you, you can totally just wait and see for as long as you like really until you need like you know if he's really that bad then you can eventually make a move, but you can at least wait and see for a month or so. All right. I mean, if Ivory gets hurt and he gets that opportunity, I mean, I think they're done with this Toby Gerhardt four times a row in the <laughs> goal line. Right now, I'm going to get a second tight end. And I'm loving Antonio Gates in the 12th. That's crazy. That's great value. Antonio like, Gates he can could be, be a top five tight end. There's no reason why he couldn't be. Antonio Gates is on the field. Uncle Phil loves him. He needs eight touchdowns and to be the highest, uh, most Best touchdowns combo. ever by a yeah. tight end. I think that's an awesome combo. And I'm going to go another pretty high ceiling back here. And I'm gonna go Tevin Coleman. I think he can flip the screen, the flip the script on Freeman. I think Freeman's going. He, I think he's going a little high, and I think Coleman's going way too low in these drafts. Coleman in the thirteenth, when he could be the starter at the end of the year, or at least that's why I'm or at not... least take a lot more touches away from Freeman than what people are saying. That's why I'm not hating on Freeman that hard. Because this guy got Freeman the second pick of the third. And if he, I mean, if he wanted to, he could have sewn up a solid handcuff with the second to last pick of the 12. But he decided to draft a backup quarterback. <laughs> which I don't under, quite understand. <laughs> I think, yeah, I've got, I've got some guys with some pretty good upside on my bench when it comes to running back. Oh, Melvin Gordon, Derrick Henry, and Tevin Coleman on my bench. All right. It's getting down to me here in my turn. I'm looking at guys like Philip Dorsett, who's probably going to be on the field for a lot of time for a very good offensive football team in the Indianapolis Colts. And I'm looking also looking at a running back with a lot of upside. That's the type train's been rolling once again. <laughs> it's bringing down. It's Christine Michael. Well, this time, along it with might the be hype, real. along with it the hype, real. he looks good on the football field. And that has not been the case. It's always been hype with no with no result, but. He looks, he looks very solid running with that first team O out there in preseason. I think I'm going to sew up both of them right now. I'm going to take Philip Dorsett and th Christine Michael here at the 13-14 turn and feel very good about the upside of both of these players. Very good. In Indianapolis is going to run three receiver sets the majority of the time. And Dorsett can be that guy, that possession receiver, that can, before you know it, has 60 70 balls i mean and people that for 60 70 balls for a 13th round pick i mean people are drafting moncrief at the middle of the fifth round i mean if they're both on the field to say i mean i know dante moncrief has a you know better chance at being the guy but i mean it's not completely out of the realm of possibilities that philip dorsett couldn't have a better year they drafted him in the first round of kate apparently they think he's a very talented guy and i just got him what my goodness Nine rounds later? Alright. We're getting into some dirty here. Oh, it's the dirty darts. You but gotta I love dig them. these guys up. My list is extensive, though. It's never, it's never empty, baby. There'll always be some jamook that I love. I think I'm gonna finally get a backup quarterback here. And I'm gonna take James Winston. Hopefully, I only have to play this guy one week. But even if for some reason Andrew Luck kind of shows flashes what he did last year, which I do not expect to happen, I think Luck's going to be very solid this year. Winston has some targets there, and he can be the guy. He can be a decent QB, too. And after that, I'm going to throw another flyer, and I'm going to go Tyler Boyd. Receiver with Cincinnati. There's a lot of guys missing in the Cincinnati offense from a year ago. 
Tyler Eifert is going to be out probably a month, at least a month. I think just this week they're saying that he's going to be jogging. Well, that <laughs> sounds at least a month out from playing football it's two, to me. It's two weeks away from the start of the the season here. I mean, if you just start just, jogging, you're a month away from being, I mean, if football is, I mean, you're talking about jogging and playing NFL football. That's two different ball games. You got Sanu's out. Marvin Jones is out. They've already said Geo's not expected to get more touches. I think, and Boyd's going to be the number two receiver opposite side of A.J. Green. I think he's a guy has some upside to him. I'm and gonna, I think the best value of any dude that's still left available at this point. I want to close out this draft and leave, not leave my bearded wonder out there by himself. I'm going to take Ryan Fitzpatrick. I think his weapons are great. I think he is a great bye week quarterback. If you're in two quarterback league, I think he's a wonderful quarterback too. I'm going to scoop him up here at the last pick of this 15 round mock draft and feel pretty good about it. I love it. Once again, hopefully we'll be able to get a screenshot up here, let you know, let you see the draft board in its entirely. Keep in mind, he did not take Ezekiel Elliott. Le'Veon Bell will be in his spot. My fat finger ruined it. <laughs> so he'll have a he'll have a Bell Peterson combo. But overall, I like our drafts a lot. I think I think we have very solid floor guys, but we have a sprinkled in bunch of guys with very high ceilings. You know, that's the other team I'm looking at. I kind of like this two spot, this kids guy. You know, he, you know, Julio, Mike Evans, I love I love those two guys. They were two of our studs coming out of that NFC South we just did. And, you know, you got Devontae Freeman and, and Jeremy Langford there at running back. I mean, I'm starting to come around to Langford a little bit. He looked pretty he, spry out there the other he day. He was in a walking boot, but he's off it now. But he, he has looked very good in preseason. I mean, Devontae Freeman there, I mean, I know it's fallen down a little bit, but a second pick in the third round for the number one fantasy running back last year, I mean, I don't think he's going to be the number one fantasy running back this year, but that's crazy. I mean, if I was this guy, I would have sold him Tevin Coleman, like I said. I mean, if you could have sold him Tevin Coleman with the second to last pick of the 12th, I mean, he probably should have done that. I don't know. Maybe he left early. Maybe the computer took over. That's the only explanation I can think of. <laughs> Other than that, I think. But he's got solid. He's got Carson Palmer and Greg Olson as quarterback and tight end. I mean, that's solid as it gets. I mean, his his flex plays are Alan Hearns and Marvin Jones, two guys Man, that Alan, I love. Alan Hearns has he's got a great floor to him too. He had he had a thousand yards, ten touchdowns last year. I mean, and he wasn't even the best receiver on the team. I think he did check out because his bench is bad. I mean, if he drafted these <laughs> starters and then drafted that bench, I mean, what happened? He, he went. Did, two, he didn't take Deion Lewis in the ten. I mean, he he, he went total. He went total two face. But I'm saying his starters. That's solid work by this guy out there. That's solid. I mean, I mean Marvin Jones and Alan Hearns in your flex. I mean, that's solid production. That's guys upside. That's guys that can score touchdowns for you. What's a team that we hate? Now, let's look around and see a team that we can dig up out of here that, have, that we hate. I'm looking right now at Team 5. I kind of got a love-hate relationship with this. Is I'm looking at his receivers, and he has Jordan Matthews as his third-best receiver. I mean, I don't hate on Keenan Allen and Jimmy Macklin as his one and two, but his flex plays are not very savory whatsoever. No, I... I mean, David Johnson and LaShawn McCoy are sexy boys at one and two running back, though. You got to give him that. I right? love That's it. some sexy boy. I think first four rounds is as good as anyone out there. I'm not big on Rawls. I don't know why, but I'm not a believer in him. And then he let me get Christine Michael in the 14th. Why didn't he scoop him up? I mean, if you're going to draft Rawls and pay the price, you got to get a handcuff on Rawls. I mean, he's one of the scariest running backs you can draft out there today. I don't think there's really too many awful there's not. drafts I mean, out there. In a 10-teamer, it's kind of hard to be awful. I mean, I'll I'm looking you, you at know him. what? Actually, I do Number not... nine is kind of bad in my eyes. Number nine is pretty bad. I'm looking at four, too. If we... Number four, he's got, as his backs, obviously Le'Veon Bell is not going to be his back. We'll say we'll swap with Elliott we'll for say, him. We'll give him Elliott. We'll give, we'll him, give him Elliott. He's starting Elliott and Danny Woodhead. And Frank Gore is on his bench, and Legarrette Blunt. Frank Gore is not on his bench. Frank Gore is a flex play in a two flex league. <laughs> That's Wolf City. 
But the running back but situation. It, but his running backs are. I mean, he's looking. Sketch. I mean, he's looking at Danny Woodhead and Frank Gore in his lineup right now, and his other flex play. He's looking at who is he looking at? Stephon There's no, Diggs, who, if Bridgewater can't throw for 150, 200 yards, I can't see Diggs' production being that great. Like we said, there can't be too Messed many. Messed up earlier. Really. I was hating on for drafting D'Angelo Williams, but he thought he had Le'Veon yeah. Bell. So I'm, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I take that back all day. Sorry, guy. But really, there's not. It's hard to have a bad team in a ten team. In yeah, draft. you got to really drop the ball out there to have a, to have a real gonna, sour puss team out there. Everyone's gonna have weak spots, but you're all. Every team's gonna have their dudes out there. I don't think there's really any guy that totally dropped the ball on this draft. I, I like both of our teams. I think there's a lot of solid teams. But, you know, you guys tell us what you think about it. Share, comment, and like our videos, please. Thank you very much, and we will see you next time. Catch you later.